Okay, in this video, we're going to find an equation that lets us look at things like position and accelerations without time. Um, but first, let's try and do this with a two-part equation or a problem. Marty McFly, the physics fly, is traveling 10 meters a second when it begins to accelerate at a rate of 2 meters per second squared. How far has McFly gone when he reaches 14 meters per second? Okay, so here I would start by saying my initial velocity is 10 meters a second. My final velocity is 14. My acceleration is 2 meters a second squared, and I need to figure out how far, so that is the displacement, delta x. But here I run into a problem. So far, I don't know an equation that has these four variables in it. So what I need to do is first figure out how much time did this take, then use that time in another equation. So to figure out how much time it takes, I will take this equation, v naught. Uh, and I'll solve for time, which is going to be v minus v naught, and then I divide both sides by the acceleration. Okay, so the time is v minus v naught, so 14 meters a second minus 10, over the acceleration of 2, which is going to give me 4 over 2, or 2 seconds. Maybe you were able to do that in your head. That's awesome. Okay, great. So the time it takes is 2 seconds. Now, I can use any of my position equations to figure out how far forward um, McFly has gone. What I would probably choose is the equation that uses average velocity. Remember, uh, the final minus initial velocity divided by 2. That is the average velocity times time. Um, so I'd get half of 10 meters per second, sorry, plus 14 times 2 seconds. So half of 24 is 12 times 2 is 24. So 24 meters. That's how far McFly goes. OK, well, there's actually a way that we can sort of um, create an equation that follows this same process uh, that lets us not have to do this every time we want to find position uh, or something similar without time. I call it the ain't got no time equation. You. Uh, you use it when you don't have time, both both literally and metaphorically. OK, so l let's kind of review what we just did here. We started with our velocity equation, v equals a t plus v naught. Then we solved for time, which gave us t equals v minus v naught over a. Pause the video and make sure that you know how we did that from before. Uh, and then we took this equation, delta x, which you know what, I'm going to write it up here just so we have some more space. Delta x equals the average velocity, which is half of v plus v naught, times t. What I'm going to do is I'm going to take this equation, or I'm sorry, I guess what we did before, was we took this equation for time and we plugged it in. So let's do that. 1 half v plus v naught times v minus v naught all over a. Okay, so that's not pretty. We're going to clean it up a little bit. The first thing that I would do is I would write the v plus v naught and the v minus v naught as their own terms up top. And then the 1 half and the a, I would put them as their own fraction together on the bottom. All right. Next, I'm going to multiply both sides by 2 times the acceleration. And of course, we should be calling this an average acceleration, which I always forget to do. Okay, So that's going to give me v plus v naught times v minus v naught. Here we have some foiling to do. So when I foil v plus v naught and v minus v naught, I'm going to get v squared uh, minus v times v naught plus v times v naught, which those are going to cancel each other out, so I can just get rid of them. Uh, and then minus v naught squared. So 2 times the acceleration times the displacement is equal to v squared minus v naught squared. And again, we got this term here by foiling these two things in parentheses. OK, well, now to clean this up just a little bit more, I'm going to add v naught squared to both sides. So that I get 2a delta x plus v naught squared is equal to my final velocity. OK, great. That is the equation. So we're going to call this, I'm going to rewrite it with v squared on the left, we're going to call this the ain't got no time equation because you use it when you don't have time. 
to find time. Get it? Okay, let's use it. Marty McFly, the physics fly, is traveling 28 meters a second when he begins to slow down at a rate of 6 meters per second squared. How far has McFly gone when he reaches 2 meters a second? Okay, this is going to be a good one. So, I would do exactly what I did before, except now my initial velocity is 28. My final is 2. Uh, and my acceleration is, we need to be careful, since we're slowing down and our velocities we decided are positive, we need to make the acceleration in the opposite direction, so negative. So negative 6 meters a second squared. Um, and then we want to figure out how far, delta x. So just like before. Only now, I look at these four things, and instead of thinking, ugh, I don't have an equation with those four things in it, you do. You have an equation that ain't got time, because we ain't got time to find time. So we write down the ain't got time equation. I choose you. And we solve for delta x. So to solve for delta x, uh, I'm going to subtract v naught squared from both sides. Then I'm going to divide both sides by 2 and a, so that I get delta x equals v squared minus v naught squared over 2a. Now I can plug in my numbers, which would be 2 meters per second, the whole thing squared, uh, minus 28 meters a second, the whole thing squared, divided by 2 times negative 6 meters per second squared. Okay, so 2 times 2 is 4, minus 28 squared, oh, that's a big one. Um, that's going to be 784, so 4 minus 784. So on top, I should get a negative 780. Uh, and the unit would actually be meters squared over seconds squared. Okay, and then I divide that by a negative 12. I could do that one. Okay, so here for the number, I'm going to get negative 780 over negative 12, so that becomes a positive 65. Um, and the second squared cancel out, and this cancels one of the meters, so meters. Okay, we were able to figure out how far McFly went without actually figuring out the amount of time that he was flying for. Let's use this for another problem. Your dog is 10 meters from a trash can running after a slice of Domino's pizza that you threw away because it is trash. Your dog slows down at a constant rate of 2 meters a second squared and comes perfectly to a stop in front of the trash can. How fast was your dog initially running? Okay, so v naught is the thing that we want to find here. And they give us delta x. It's 10 meters because he goes that 10 meters before hitting the can. Now, the fact that he comes perfectly to, uh, perfectly to a stop, that tells me that the final velocity is zero. And the acceleration is two meters per second squared. Now, since I've decided that this 10 meters that the dog was um, from the trash can, like here's the dog, he's having a great time, it's a terrible dog, I don't even know what I'm doing. Um, he goes 10 meters to the right, then we need to make sure that the acceleration he experiences is to the left. So I need to make that a negative 2 meters per second squared. Okay, so now I look at my equation. v squared equals 2a delta x plus v naught squared because I don't have time and I need to find the initial velocity, but I don't have time to find time. So I think, how can I solve this equation to get the initial velocity by itself? Um, well, first I'm going to take advantage of the fact that the final velocity is 0. So I'm just going to plug in 0 on the left. Um, and then I'm going to subtract 2a delta x equals v naught squared. And of course, the last thing that I need to do is take the square root. So that I get v naught squared equals the square root of negative 2a delta x. Now, you may be thinking, wait a minute, I can't square a negative, or square root a negative number. And that's true. But as long as you made your acceleration a negative 2, meters per second squared, then you're going to get a positive number under your square root uh, times 10. Okay, so the square root of positive, let's see, 2 times 2 is 4, times 10 is 40, uh, 40, and that's a meter per second squared times a meter, which becomes a meter squared per second squared. I can write that better. Meter squared per 
your second square. Okay, so positive 40, uh, and the square root of positive 40 is about, we'll say, 6.3. And the square root of meters squared per second squared is just meters per second. So we found the initial velocity of your dog. Congratulations. Let's do one more. You're daydreaming on your bike going 5 meters a second when you realize a parked car is in front of you and you slam on your brakes. You slide 6 meters before hitting the car going 2 meters a second. Ouch. What was your acceleration? Okay, so here uh, I have an initial velocity of 5 meters a second. Uh, and you slam on your brakes and slow down, this time not to a stop. This time you slow down just to 2 meters a second. And that's pretty, that's like, that's pretty, you wouldn't be dead, but it would hurt. Uh, okay, and you are told that this happens over a distance of 6 meters, so our displacement is 6 meters and we want to find our acceleration. So I'm going to write a question mark there to remember that I need an equation with A in it. Okay, so I look at my ain't got no time equation, which should be obvious because I, um, well, I ain't got no time. And I get A by itself. Okay, so to get A by itself, nothing is zero, so I can't get rid of anything. I would have to subtract V naught squared from both sides. Okay, so next, to get the acceleration by itself, I would divide both sides by 2 times delta x. So the 2's cancel, and delta x cancels. So the acceleration is v squared minus v naught squared, all over 2 times delta x. Okay, so that's going to give me 2 meters a second, the whole thing squared, minus 5 meters a second, the whole thing squared, over 2 times 6 which is, what, 4 meters squared per second squared minus 25 meters squared per second squared over 12 meters. 4 minus 25. Oh, that's going to be a negative number, right? That's negative 21. Let me write that. Negative 21 meters squared uh, per second squared. Okay. So now when I take negative 21 meters per second squared and divide by 12 meters, I'm going to get negative um, 1.75. Uh, now this meter just cancels one of the meters squared, which leaves me with a meter per second squared. That's the unit that I want, and that's my acceleration. Congratulations. You have found acceleration without finding time. That's the end of the video. Good job. Bye-bye.